So I guess I'll get it started by uh, turning it over to you, Joseph. And, you know, we, 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 we both watched, uh, you know, the conference championship games. Let's start with the Bengals and the Chiefs and the AFC championship game. I, I don't think anybody, us included, uh, would ever have said at the beginning of the season that the Cincinnati Bengals were going to be the uh, AFC representative in the Super Bowl. No, not at all. And I think that um, I even remember <clears throat> talking on this podcast about how that, um, you know, we were impressed with the Bengals, um, you know, but they weren't ready. To, they were possibly a playoff team, but weren't really, really ready to take that leap yet to right. being a contender. And here they are in the Super Bowl, which <laughs> by definition, you're a contender if you get to the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> um, you know, uh, like you said, I, I was uh, on a plane during the uh, the championship game, so I didn't get to watch as much as normal, right. but they get to see a little bit. And, you know, um, going into Arrowhead and beating the Chiefs, like, they have a legitimate shot to win the Super Bowl, I think, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it's not – I don't think it's one of these where it's going to be a blowout. I think they're going to be in the game. And, you know, I, I kind of jokingly said that <clears throat> Joe Burrow should retire uh, – either now or either way after the Super Bowl, because like, this is like the pinnacle of his career just coming off the, the college national championship. But, um, you know, he's, he's, I'd say arguably one of the, or arguably the best young quarterback in, in the game now, you yes. know, yes. And maybe the best based on what he's done here. And he gives him a, a legitimate shot with, you know, um, uh, you know, Joe Mixon being a very good running back, um, you know, and um, yeah, I mean, I think that, they've far exceeded my expectations as a team. Yeah, you know, Joe Burry, when you were talking about uh, what he's been able to accomplish and jokingly saying he could retire, you know, he's kind of like the Joe Namath of this era. You know, Joe Namath, yeah. in just his, I think it was his fourth year, maybe his, right. I think it was his fourth year with the Jets, maybe fifth, but I think it was fourth. They win the Super Bowl, and then they really didn't do anything the rest of his career, and he kind <laughs> of uh, pyramided that into a Hall of Fame uh, career, and Joe right. Burrow may well, do the same thing. Well, Joe Burrow's in the NFL, so he's already a Hall of Famer. <laughs> <laughs> he got, got to the Super Bowl, yeah. He got to the Super Bowl or like earlier earlier than people expected, Hall of Fame. And he's well, a quarterback, Hall of Fame. Right. Well, I, I, I just think it's uh, – let, let me talk a little bit about Joe Burrow. Joseph, you mentioned that he's arguably uh, or could be the best young quarterback in the game today. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good young quarterbacks, obviously. I mean, you can think about Justin Herbert out in uh, uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers. I mean, you've got, uh, of course, the, the rookie quarterbacks that, that have come on uh, or, or look like they're going to be pretty good with Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville and, uh, you know, the, uh, Zach Wilson at, at the New York Jets. Um, Does he I look mean, like he's going to be good? Huh? Does he look like well, he's I'm just talking good? about young quarterbacks, oh, okay. you know, that have been that have been in the well, league here for a while. They're, they're, there's some that there's some buzz around, you know what I mean? Like, there's yeah, some yeah, buzz okay, around. Okay, That's okay. right. You know, you got Patrick Mahomes, obviously, who's still considered a young quarterback. Um, Did you include Sam Darnold in that discussion? I don't know that I put uh, Sam. Jo Josh uh, Allen. I mean, we're forgetting about Josh yeah. Allen, right? All right. My point though is not to name all these guys. It's just to say that what impresses me about Joe Burrow is, you know, last year the the Bengals won, I think, four or five games. Burrow tore his ACL kind of two thirds right. of the way through the season. Uh, the Bengals really never recover from that. Not only does the guy recover from that, he comes back with a lot of moxies, not afraid to stand in the pocket, not afraid to run. Uh, you can tell that he's a great leader. And the thing that impressed me about him against the Titans and against the Chiefs, you know, the Titans sacked him nine times. The guy never threw the ball into harm's way, kind of like uh, we saw Kyler Murray do that against the Rams in their first playoff game. We saw uh, – uh, Jimmy Garoppolo do that against the Rams, never put the ball, took his sacks when he knew he was going to get sacked, came back to fight another day. And then against the Chiefs, you know, a couple times they had him sacked there late in the game and he would break free and run for key first downs. Uh, the guy's got an innate ability uh, to just throw the right pass at the right time and to make it on target. He just, I mean, he just seems like an assassin. You know, I mean, I, I just think that He's the guy right now that you have to say is the number one young quarterback going forward. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and it's kind of inarguable at this point. I mean, again, whether you include Patrick Mahomes exactly in that list or not. Right. Um, right. You know, the fact that he's gotten to a Super Bowl now and taking the, the Bengals of all teams, not a right. historically right. great franchise. Like he steps into the Steelers or the Cowboys or something like that. But the Bengals, I mean, 
I, I don't think anybody saw this coming this early for Joe Burrow, and um, he he deserves a lot of credit, definitely. Yeah, and not only did he take the Bengals, the Bengals are considered to have one of the more porous offensive lines in football when you look at playoff teams, uh, and he was able to 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 weather that. Um, yeah, Romo kept mentioning that in the AFC Championship game. <laughs> how bad that was, how the offensive line was not that good. <laughs> Let's talk, that over and over. let's talk a little bit about the Chiefs real quick. I mean, here's a team that that uh, has hosted. You know, they we mentioned this, I think, on a previous podcast. They're, they've, they were the first team in NFL history to host four consecutive conference championship games. You know, they got beat by the Patriots in 2018, uh, beat the, uh, the Titans. I, I believe it was the Titans in 2019. Uh, of course, last year they won the uh, AFC championship game oh. against the Bills. And then, of, or, uh, and then, of course, this year, uh, we're in it against the Bengals. So the Chiefs are, are a good football team. What, what really, what really kind of interested me about this game is, and I'll let you guys kind of talk a little bit about it, is, uh, you know, the Chiefs had a 21-7 to lead, correct, uh, right before halftime. And uh, Nathan and I were talking a little bit before we got, before we started taping, uh, you know, the Chiefs had the ball on the, like the two yard line right before halftime. I think it was 21 to 10. 21 to 10. Excuse me. You're right. 21 to 10. But they had the ball on the two yard line, couldn't punch it in. And, you know, I'm wondering, should they have kicked the field goal there? I mean, you know, if you go up 24 to 10, it's a two score game still. You know, you get some points on the board there. I don't, I don't, I don't hate the fact that they didn't kick a field goal, but they call it a ridiculous play. Right. They were on like the, I don't know what yard line, within the five, I think. Right. Within there was the five, five for sure. There was five seconds left. I don't think they had any timeouts, whether they did or not. There's only five seconds left. Right, right. Uh, I don't think they had any time. They, well, they obviously didn't have any timeouts because of how the play's about to, right. to play out. There's five seconds left, and they throw, he, they throw a little, like, bubble screen, and they tackle the guy, like, on the one, and that's it. Right, right. Like, like why do you – how do you not throw the ball in the end zone? Yeah, or, I don't know. I don't know. It's like he, he throws it, you know, laterally to a guy with five seconds on the goal line. And great play by the defense to tackle them short yeah, of the, yeah. the, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and another thing that, that was kind of interesting to me, uh, you know, in the first half, the, the, the Chiefs pretty much had their way with the Bengals in the first half. Uh, Mahomes was on target. Uh, you know, they were moving the football. They scored 21 points. Uh, it was pretty much the Chiefs' show. In the second half, you know, logic would tell you that when you go in the locker room, your defensive coordinator for the Bengals would have said, look, we got to we got to get some pressure on Mahomes." But no, he went the exact opposite way. Not only did he not go for pressure, he, he rushed two guys at some point in time and sometimes sent a blitz from the corner or from some guys he wasn't expecting. And if you watch that second half, Mahomes was just confused. I mean, he held the ball so long. It kind of reminded me of the Super Bowl last year against the Buccaneers. You know, you got to give kudos to the Bengals defensive coordinator uh, with a tremendous second half adjustment to really confuse Mahomes a little bit, force him to hold the ball a little longer than expected, and then bring some pressure maybe with some delayed blitzes from corners and safeties. Yeah, the Bengals defensive line looked really good. I was impressed with them. They did. Uh, especially number 94. I forget his last name now, but uh, there was a play late in the game. I'm, I'm sure we – well, I guess I can talk about it. Uh, late in the game, you know, the Chiefs were had a first and goal, I think, right down three, right. I thought for sure they were going to score, and then the Bengals had much time left, right? And, you know, whatever. But uh, then you know, they got him down to third goal, and Mahomes is running around back there. And they had number 94, D Lyman, he looked like he was on a QB spy, right? right like he right. didn't rush, he dropped back, looked like he was spying Mahomes. And then eventually, I don't know if they told him, you know, hey, after so many seconds, if he's not scrambling go ahead and rush him because right. sometimes i think they'll tell him that right know? right or if it was if it was his decision if it was his decision i'd give him kudos on because Mahomes is sit back with a lot of time you know because they're not really rushing anybody and this guy just decides he's gonna he's gonna you know forget about his he's he's, he's gonna press the the right. issue basically and he shoots through there and and, and strips from home and i think they fall out of the yeah. chance to kick the field goal but yeah. it was a great play by him it was, it was a great, great play. play and then and then you've got that other play you know you've got the 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 uh well, there's lots of plays in the game, but just the ability of the of the Bengals to hang in there uh, and and not get you know not get too away from their game plan. They ran the ball very effectively. The Bengals. I mean, they had uh, about 116 yards rushing on the day, which uh, which is not bad when you look at the Chiefs. The Chiefs really were were not well. They, I guess the Chiefs kind of ran. If, if you throw in the quarterback, they kind of ran for about 100 yards or so. So uh, 
you know, not too bad. But another thing that was interesting about the Bengals, too, is, you know, probably the Chiefs went into that game saying, we're going to take away Jamar Chase. We're not going to let him beat us. And they double covered him a lot. T. Higgins stepped up, six catches for 103 yards. Uh, Joe Mixon had three catches out of the backfield. Uh, and Tyler Boyd, four catches for 19 yards, which doesn't sound like a lot. But if, they're, if you're going to take Chase out of the game, you know, Higgins and Boyd have got to step up. And, and they did that against the Chiefs. Yeah, I think that that's a good point, too, because, you know, uh, it just shows that they, they do have multiple weapons. It's not just all right. the marching, you know, um, is had a great season overall, but definitely got hot at the right time down the stretch for the Bengals. Um, I mentioned Joe Mixon earlier, but you mentioned uh, T Higgins as well. Right. And, um, you know, that's the, you know, Joe Burrow is as good as he is. He's not working with the NB deck either. Right. So, right. Right. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be a, uh, you know, formidable uh, uh, asset that they have against the Rams, that Rams defense. Um you know, I, I, we'll talk about the Rams here in a little bit, I'm sure. But um, that's a great point. Just the fact that it's not just Burrow and Chase. There's definitely more options for the Bengals. 